Hey guys, welcome back. This is Joel, and we are right in the middle of the Aruba's uh, ST branch series. Um, in the previous video, we talked about uh, policy based routing, right? Uh, technically, I was supposed to do uh, the dynamic path steering as part of that, but that video became quite long, so I decided to shoot a separate video for the dynamic path steering, right? Uh, but I guess this is going to be a quicker one when compared to the previous one, right? Um, so that being said, let's jump on to the topology which we have here. Okay, so this is the topology, right? Um, and uh, I think I also probably have a uh, we have some details here on uh, DPS, right? The dynamic path steering. That's going to be over here, right? So dynamic path steering. Uh, think of it as very similar to if you have worked on the Cisco ST van Viptela. Think of it as almost similar to um, the application aware routing, right? So what you can do is um, in policy based routing, what we did, we we um, created some kind of a uh, traffic classification, right? We matched the traffic based on certain criteria and then we decided what are going to be the next stop for that, right? Uh, whereas in case of dynamic path selection, again, uh, DPS can be used in conjunction with PBR as well, or you can use DPS just isolated by itself as well, right? In our case, I have removed the uh, PBR policy which we put last time, right? So right now we have everything, I mean, it's all slate clean, right? We don't have any PBR policy, but technically you can use uh, both of them together as well, right? Uh, but that being said, uh, so how this really works is you can again, uh, you know, you define a classification, you match the traffic, and then what you can do is you can define the SLS, right? So for example, over here, once the traffic rule has been matched, right, a particular path will be selected, right? You can define which is going to be the primary path and secondary path. And then what you can also do is, um, you know, you can mention the SLS. You can say that, hey, look, I want for this application, I want 100 milliseconds of latency. I want 10% uh, loss, right? I want so much jitter, right? Very, very useful, especially for voice applications, applications which are very sensitive to, you know, latency, loss and jitter, right? So you can define those SLAs. And once you define those SLAs, right, the device will continuously monitor those uplinks, right, for those SLAs. And once the moment the SLA has crossed on the uplink, or one of the link, right, the traffic will be switched over to the, uh, you know, standby link or the secondary link, right. So that's the concept behind the whole DPS, right. So coming back, um, let's see, so I have my uh, gateway here, let's just make sure that uh, all the tunnels are up, right, sometimes the tunnels might go down if you're doing this in a ENG sorts, right, in that case, just reboot the machine and then things will come up. In our case, all the devices are up. Also in the topology, what I have done here is, I have actually gone and um, uh, let's let's make sure. I think I have uh, I've added this um, you know van emulator, right? So the van emulator is basically a device um, you know which you can add in ENG where you can tinker with the latency, jitter, and um, you know loss for a particular link. I I have shut this link, so this link is not no longer active. The traffic is going to go like this, right? Let me just make sure that I have shut it, and I'll also show you how the van emulator looks like, right? So let's delete that, let's um, go on to my, first let's make sure that the MPLS, what I've done is I've moved the configurations from Ethernet 1 slash 1 to Ethernet 0 slash 0. And ideally I should be shutting the Ethernet 1 slash 1, right? So let's check. Let's uh, disconnect, let's connect back again. Okay, so show IP interface brief. Okay, so we have uh, IP address on 0 slash 0 and Ethernet 1 slash 1 is still up. Maybe let's go and shut it. Perfect. That's good. So traffic is going to flow through the van emulator. And how does the van emulator look like? It's going to look like this. Right? Um, yeah, second. Okay. So this is how it's going to look like. Right? Um, right now, maybe... Yeah, right now you see, um, so um, from, you, if you see the interfaces here, it's Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1. So you can see here from Ethernet 0 to 1, we can set the bandwidth, we can set the delay, uh, you know, we can set the loss, right? So that way you can tinker with the latency and, uh, you know, packet loss, right? 
Similarly, uh, you can do it in the reverse direction as well from Ethernet 1 to 0. In our case, we are using the symmetric mode. So whatever we do in one direction, it will be applied in the other direction as well. This is just a appliance to kind of um, add some delays, add some you know loss so that you can deteriorate a particular link and we can see if you know that is getting reflected in our HD brand solution. Perfect. Um, I think we are good, right? So this is good. For uh, to begin with, what we'll do is uh, we will um, we'll create the DPS policy and we'll see that as per the policy, the correct uplink is being used. Then what we'll do is we'll come to this van emulator and we'll tinker with the link uh, characteristics. We'll we'll add a loss, we'll add a delay, and then we'll see if the traffic is taking the alternate path, right? And if that is getting reflected in the HD brand solution as per our DPS policy. Perfect. So let's. Uh, Again, come back here. Just make sure that uh, all the tunnels are up, right? Let's double check that. Uh, so you can see all the four tunnels are up, right? Let's make sure all the, I mean, if the tunnels are up, the devices should be up, but just to make sure you can see all the three devices are up. Uh, you can also probably go and check network services and you can see everything is looking in green, which is a good sign. Spoke is also green in color, great. Um, from the routing perspective also things are looking everything is green so we are good like things are good for us to start with also remember I have removed the PBR policy from the employee role which we added in the previous uh, video you can go back and check how we added it I have just removed it from there right perfect so that being said let's start with the DPS policy right so we'll have to do this uh, we are doing this on the branch so let's go to the branch Let's go to the, I mean, it's going to be the device. Right, so let's select the device. And uh, here you will see a section. Okay, we'll have to go to the, you know, device. Van, we'll go to the van section. In the van section, you have a another subsection for dynamic path steering. So here we'll create our policy. Okay, we'll give a name for the policy. Right, dynamic path steering policy, very similar to again application routing, right? If you have done that before, this is going to be a cakewalk. Give a name and uh, let's hit the, uh, okay, so it's asking us to add the rules, right? We need to add the rules. So I'm going to add the rule. I'm going to say that traffic from a particular user role, right? So we are going to do the same thing, right? When the traffic comes in, let's actually go back. Uh, what we'll do is we will actually uh, use the same uh, you know, we'll use the same client which we used in the previous video in the same VLAN, VLAN 7. It will, when the traf when the client comes in on the gateway, it will get the role of what? Employee, correct? It will get the role of the employee. And once it gets the role of the employee, then uh, what we'll do is we'll try to, uh, for this particular DPS uh, policy, we'll use, a, we'll use this subnet. For PBR, we used this subnets last time, but for DPS, we'll use this 10.1.10 uh, subnet, right? So from the branch, when you're trying to talk to, um, you know, this subnet traffic can technically by default, it can use either internet or it can use MPLS. In fact, it will use both because we have ECMP, right? We have put default gateway. So technically it can use ECMP. We have two uh, tunnels, right? But because of the DPS policy, what we'll say is we'll give high preference to MPLS. So ideally traffic should go like this over the tunnel and then come inside like this, right? So this should be the. Uh, this should be when the MPLS is all working fine, right? As per the DPS policy. After after we have verified this, we will go and introduce delay and loss along the link, and we'll see that the traffic is actually now switching and going in this direction, right? That's what we are going to do, right? And to help with this, what I have done is to generate a little more amount of data. What I have done is I, here I have put one more Windows machine, and I have a TFTP server set up. So from this guy, we'll be trying to talk to this guy. This will be in the subnet of 10.1.10. Perfect. Great. So we know what we are trying to do. So I think we have a good game plan now, which means we are okay. So here, right, we'll have to select the traffic coming from user role employee, right? Where, where does the traffic go to? It goes to the network, which network 10.1.1.0, right? So that's the subnet, which we are trying to use for this DPS policy. Dot zero, right? Slash 24. And the application port is okay hit the save button perfect so that's good so we are going we have decided or if we have defined what type of traffic let's hit the next button here um, you know we have to create an SLA so again there are some SLAs uh, 
you know remember i told talked about sla right so uh, the box already or aruba center already comes with some predefined slas which are very good for say skype or for teams and video and all of that right in our case we can probably go for something like a highly available sla right um, and you see those are the values which you see latency of 120 jitter of 150 and uh, loss of 10% right if you want you can change these values as well at any point for us i think it's fine and we can continue using this i mean this is obviously depending on the uh, sla which you really need for your application technically right in our case we are doing tftp and we are just doing a lab so doesn't really matter but this is where you can tinker and you can define your own sls let's go next and here this is the last step where we have to now define the uh, path right like i said we are going to use our atnt mpls path as the you know primary so we're going to select that and for secondary we just have two paths so the other option will be using the internet perfect great so we um, we have selected the primary and the secondary path which is good we are going to hit the finish button okay so once uh, the configuration goes in you should see a nice window here yeah there you go so at any point if you want to see if there are already dps policies configured all you need to do is come here and click on this and you will see the policy like here you can clearly understand traffic going from employee to this subnet these are the three sla values we have defined and if the traffic uh, you know um, we can actually enable fec and stuff right we are not doing it but forward error correction we spoke about it in the introductory video where we introduced some kind of parity packet so that you know you can reduce the retransmissions and you basically improve the it's basically van optimization right you can improve the uh, link uh, uh, connections you can improve the quality of the sessions and so on but uh, for now let's not do that we have just introduced these three sla values and uh, primary is mpls and uh, secondary is inet perfect so this is the configuration now it's probably time to test it out so we'll go to our client machine which is over here let's uh, you know maybe bounce the uh, network card right um, i mean this really technical doesn't have any implication but i just want to kind of show you that we are doing it from scratch right so replugging the card in right tftp server has stopped working that's fine you can again bring it up that's not an issue so we have this guy right let's check if it has received an ip address yes it has received 10107.129 perfect let's see if we can ping uh, 10.100.7.1 uh, which is the default gateway yes we can ping now let's see if we can ping the other guy which is the server right so we have the server over here right on the server we are basically running this as a tftp server right and the ip address here is ip config right so it is 10.1110 so we are going to first see if we have connectivity perfect we have connectivity which means what we'll do now is we can go ahead and start our tftp server sorry tftp client right go to client and here we are going to put the ip address of the tftp server 10.1.1.10 port number for tftp is 69 local file which we'll select is i have like a random dump file you know with like 300 mbs i'm gonna select that and uh, what we'll do is we'll say put right so you can see now the traffic is actually going because on the other box you can see you know the file size right as you see here the file is actually coming in right so the traffic is flowing through our ST branch topology okay now it's time to analyze what is really happening so we can go to maybe a branch gateway let's look at the CLI right so user right would be the command and here you can see the user remember we selected uh, uh, you know we still are using uh, we still are using the role of employee right it's again a continuation from the previous video you can go and check how we created the roles and how we added the role uh, for a particular uh, VLAN and so on, right? But um, uh, in our case, what we are trying to do here is, um, you know, the tra when when anyone on the um, VLAN uh, seven, right? Anyone sends traffic on VLAN seven, right now, um, it's pro mapped to uh, the employee role, right? So okay, so it's mapped to the employee role and um, you know um, uh, so when the gateway sees the traffic right from the employee role what it will do is it will trigger the dps policy because we have attached the dps policy to the employee role right at least that's how it should work so 
right now we are seeing that traffic uh, is getting correctly categorized with the right role which is a good thing now what we can do is uh, we can basically go and look at show van threshold stats right and there you go what you see here is uh, interesting uh, the first line right what you see that's what you need to understand here you see there is a flag of dvp let's see what is this p flag right uh, okay i think my face is probably covering it let me just go a little bit up right perfect so i think now it's much better um so you see okay so you have um, uh, the p flag right the p flag over here and uh, what is this p flag you can see the p flag is there only for the first line right it's corresponding to 10.1.31.2 so if you go back to our topology over here what is 10.1.31.2 right you can see here right um, 10.1.31.2 is technically i believe this particular ip over here right so it kind of shows us that the traffic is going via the MPLS link, which we, um, you know, which we, that's, that's how it is supposed to be. That's how we have designed it. Correct. So traffic is going in the, on the correct uh, link right now. Okay. So um, we can also probably look at the latency loss jitter and all of that. Right. So I think you have a command for that. Show van, uh, uh, show van. I think that's, uh, okay. So I think that's show data path. Sorry. So show data path van and thresh probe stats I think right so you can see here right now if you look at uh, the path which we are interested in right which is the path we are interested in the 10.1.31.2 30, uh, correct so that's the path uh, this is the path and if you look at the um, uh, latency packet loss jitter it is pretty small right there's no it, everything is almost zero right because Currently, we have maintained it that way. We have made sure that the path is not deteriorating. It is on the right one. Perfect. Now, what we'll do is, like I said, uh, right, uh, the next important thing is we need to kind of uh, uh, start adding some latency or some kind of, we have to deteriorate that link, right? So, where is that link? This one, right? So, we will go to this guy. Okay. So, there you go. We'll start adding some delays. Remember, we have put uh, 120 milliseconds, right, of um, delay is allowed. But uh, also remember that the, the delay which will be introduced here is in one direction. But it's fine. I think I'll, I'll add maybe 130 in one direction, right? So that totally it becomes like 260. It's fine. Anything more than 120, our link should deteriorate, okay? So I've added like 130 milliseconds of latency. Uh, loss is going to be, say, we are allowed 10%. I'm going to add 20%, right? Before that, I just again want to make sure that all our tunnels are up before even introducing this. Yeah, all the tunnels are up right now. So I'm adding these two things, right? Um, or actually, let's probably keep it, um, you know, 10%, maybe like, uh, let's, yeah, let's keep it, I don't know, maybe because of the huge amount of loss, uh, you know, the tunnels might go down. So let's keep it 10%. And again, um, uh, for delay, I think delay is fine, Let, delay is good right cool so what we'll do is uh, we'll add this so right now that value has gone in right in one direction and uh, what we should be seeing is it takes a little bit of time i believe I, i'm just hoping the tunnels go, don't go down right so tunnels are still up which is fine uh, what we need to start seeing here is very important right so right now we earlier saw that it was using the mpls link which is the primary ampling as per our dps policy now when you run this there you go right you see the flag it is not dvp anymore earlier okay let me just again scroll a little bit up right so you can see the policy here it is not just dvp anymore right it is dvp n and n stands for non-compliant perfect if you scroll a little bit top we had the policy as dvp the flags were dvp which means it was compliant used by the policy there was no n flag but now because we have introduced this whole delays and all of that you can see things are going bad right the few things which we can actually see on the again let's see if the tunnels are good the tunnels are still good we can start seeing maybe some data sometimes you know it takes a lot of time for some of the data to show up here so uh, but let's see if we you know let's see if we have some good luck today so we can so we are on the overview page and there should be van health over here right yeah so this data like i said right takes a little bit of time 
let me change this to last three hours and yet i think we don't because we just now created it right so it takes i think uh, even for i think the dps paths to switch it takes about three minutes i guess there are certain timers of those sort which you can explore but uh, <coughs> yeah so i think it, this takes a little bit of time meanwhile let's also maybe look at the another piece which is uh, we could probably go to devices Okay, the other place, like I said, we could do is go to the device and go to the van. Here again, let's make sure our tunnels are all up, right? The four tunnels are good. Um, but um, we could now probably look at path steering here. So this is where you can see the DPS, right? Path steering, dynamic path steering data, like, right? So you can see uh, compliance is still one on one. Uh, but if you scroll down here, right okay there you go you can see some information right so you see uh, this is uh, okay forget the first two lines I think this is something which I was testing yesterday but these are the two lines which are or the, the top two events right which is basically the current time if you look at my current time on the top my laptop you know it's very much coincides with this so um, you can see the MPLS link was compliant before right first it was compliant before we added any kind of delay and loss but after that you can see it has become non-compliant because of latency of 134 milli milliseconds and you can see here on the top right it was green in color before but as you see the latest value is red in color and it says red basically means non-compliant right so that's what you see over here right so this one probably takes a little bit of time for it to change but you can see uh, almost on a real-time basis you can see whenever it's red in color it basically means that that particular path is not compliant anymore okay so um, yeah so that's important piece what we could do now is again you know we could go back and remove the latency and we can see if the flag switches back we, before that i just wanted to double check if we can see the van health once again one last try maybe because this one takes a little bit of time yeah i think this takes quite some time for the data to show up i still see no data here uh but well, that's fine okay so what we'll do is uh, we will um, again go back uh, to our uh, we'll go back to the to this guy right and let's uh, probably remove this whole latency which we added and the loss right let's go to tab right so that's good in fact um, I know let's just to be uh, just to be safe let's just put a delay of zero right so that's good and uh, loss is also going to be packet loss is going to be zero okay Perfect. So we've added, uh, you know, we have basically made the link to be better now, right? Which means, ideally, you know, after some time, if I again go back here, gateways, and if I click on this device, if I click on uh, van, path steering, right? Yeah, while that is okay there we go it's loading that's fine okay there you see at the end we can start seeing after red you are starting to see green in color it's starting to be compliant again correct so you can see here even the latest event has come in it tells us that the latency because the latency and loss were removed now the path has become compliant we should be seeing the same thing here as well if you run this uh, command again right <coughs> Okay, so it's still not reflected. Probably takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time for the switch to happen from non-compliant to compliant. So, uh, but ideally, yeah, if you wait, maybe let's wait for a few seconds. Okay, so I had to wait for a couple of minutes. I believe there is a timer involved for the DPS to not continuously flap. That's why you see uh, the flag is now changed from, uh, you know, earlier it was DBPN to now it is changed back to DBP because we removed the latency and the loss right so yeah i think that's predominantly what i wanted to kind of cover here um, let's also do a little bit of cleanup that is predominantly i just want to um, you know let's go back here again so i just wanted to remove the trust um, i think this data is still not visible that's fine okay so only thing which i want to do is i basically want to remove the 
um, you know interface which has been configured to trust um, I mean to be untrusted we'll remove it because in the next video we will be doing uh, redundancy right we'll be doing the uplink sharing redundancy and maybe we'll also do VRRP so um, you know I want my VLANs to be trusted for that um, technically I mean you can you can define certain VLANs to be trusted and certain not in our case I don't I don't think I'm going to have the I don't have any use for the clients anymore at least for the next video so what I'll do is uh, right in front of you let me just go to the device and uh, basically make them uh, let's go to interface right let's go to the port let's go to this particular interface I guess right and we were we had untrusted it let's make it trusted hit the save button right so that and uh, even in the security apply policy part what we'll do is we'll select this guy and we will make it trusted right save it so that's that's basically i'm just setting ourselves up for the next video right nothing to do with dps specifically but um, i think uh, yeah that's that's predominantly what i wanted to cover in this video right going back to our topology what did we actually do we um, we kind of uh, created a DPS policy which matched the traffic coming from the employee laptop going into this particular subnet 10.1.1.0 and uh, we provided the MPLS link as the primary link right uh, for the DPS policy if the SLS are met but uh, and we verified that was working as expected then we went and used this uh, we used this amazing uh, you know uh, emulator to add some kind of latency and so on so that uh, we could uh, deteriorate this particular link the MPLS link and we saw that now the policy was showing that this particular link is not compliant anymore right and we were able to see that in the um, you know we were able to see that in the graphs and the traffic would obviously then use the internet uplink because the primary link is not working as expected cool uh, finally we again rolled it back we removed the latency and we saw that the link uh, or the DPS you know uh, uh, policy again started showing the MPLS link as compliant okay so that's what we did uh, in this video um, um, and uh, yeah so I think um, we have done quite a lot of content on the SD branch so go back if you have missed some of the content you can go back and check uh, you know the playlist uh, on the channel uh, or you can come back and check in at any point of time whenever you're doing a deployment or you want to just brush upon those skills right uh, maybe next video might be the last one where we will or I mean uh, uh, it, it might not be the last one we might do more videos in future but in this stretch I'm planning to kind of end it at the next video where we will um, you know work on um, the redundancy part right so um, you know uh, we have two branch gateways here how do you bring in redundancy into play and also remember in sd band we did things like t-lock extension right which was nothing but sharing the uplinks in, um, you know of, uh, between the two devices that's something which we'll explore again that's a very interesting topic as well right so yeah uh, do come back to the next video and thanks for watching have a good one bye bye